I'm Katy Perry. And I'm Austin Hankwitz, and this is After Earnings, the show from Morning Brew and Stakeholder Labs that brings investors up close and personal with the executives behind the world's most interesting companies. Today, we're talking with John Fieldley, the CEO of Celsius, who, by the way, was two Celsiuses deep in starting the interview. Celsius is a lifestyle energy drink with zero sugar, performance-based ingredients, and a whole range of flavors from peach vibe to orange marshmallow, a lot of things in between. And Katie, we had a blast. I mean, we covered their turnaround story from being delisted from the NASDAQ to now becoming a billion dollar brand, how they approach coming up with new flavors and products, new products that might be around on the corner in 2024 and beyond, as well as John's favorite celebrity Celsius supporter. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this interview. So with that being said, let's jump into it. John, thanks so much for hanging out with us today on this episode of After Earnings. Really excited to have you here. Glad to be here. Got a nice cold Celsius too. Let's go. Yeah, I just cracked mine open as well. How many Celsius are you deep today? One, two, three? It's been a busy day. We had a town hall meeting with the team, so we're too we're too deep right now. Yes. Too deep right now. I love it. Now, here's a question. Is it Celsius? What's plural Celsius? Is it Celsius? Is Celsius? How how do I tell someone I've had more than one Celsius today? Oh man, it's however you you however you explain it or has, say it. That's the way to go. So we got great flavors. I could have as many. I had two Celsius today, so we're rocking and rolling. I'm so glad it. to hear that because I've been saying Celsius. Like the science, it like gets a scientific term, and I'm just gonna keep doing that now that you said I could do whatever I, whatever I want. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, John, it's so funny. The other day I was looking up a playlist for the gym, and I randomly was like, I'm just gonna search the word Celsius. Are you aware that there's like hundreds of playlists that have Celsius in the title on Spotify? No, I'm not. I gotta check that out. Really, really fun. Great playlists. So we gotta ask you. What would be three must-have songs or artists on your Celsius playlist? On my Celsius playlist, uh, so many, so many different artists out there. I think uh, we just did a partnership with two friends, so we got to listen to some of their music. You got to go uh, Pitbull. Even, uh, Pitbull would we'll go with. Got to go with some Miami vibes as well. So we're down here in South Florida. All right, uh, a little EDM maybe. Yeah, why not? Why not? A little bit of everything. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. So I'm sure you guys know this, but you actually share a name with a very controversial crypto company who I actually lost money to back in the day. But we thought before we jump into the interview, it'd be actually kind of funny to look up past trademark filings for the name Celsius. So real quick, John, which of these products do you think is not made by a company who filed for a trademark with the name Celsius in the past? Is it A, a tanning salon company, B, an antifreeze company? company or see a semiconductor company semiconductor ding 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 john for the Dirty. win oh my goodness i'm yes. on a roll today all right hey, so that celsius on the celsius is right all right so let's kick off this interview talking about the incredible growth story you've seen now as a company right you guys have grown market share a bunch you're officially a billion dollar brand you all went from a what the heck is a Celsius now officially crossing that coveted 10% market share threshold, now sitting at about 10.5%. Bank of America is modeling for a 14% market share capture by the end of this year. So what would you say has catalyzed this market share expansion over the last couple of years? Is it improved distribution via Pepsi? Is it top of funnel marketing? Is it a mix of the two? Yeah, no, I mean, getting to a 10 share is, is practically near impossible in the energy category. And we not only got to 10 share, but we've been really working hard and, and, and gaining more distribution. And uh, the latest data has us right around 11 share. So tons of momentum behind the brand. It really has to do, as you mentioned, top funnel, being able to connect with consumers, creating that awareness, creating that trial, and then also that loyalty behind the product. And it's consumer health and wellness trends over the years. And then most importantly, over the last you know 15 months, it's really Really been the distribution. So we just anniversaried our one year anniversary with Pepsi as a distribution partner in North America in October. And that has really allowed us to scale to almost a 98% ACV. So we're, we should be in almost every single store around the country. The big opportunity right now is working with retailers for the upcoming resets to really gain the better placement in the retailers, additional flavors. We got some great innovation coming as well. Yeah, John, it sounds like you have a loyal following, but also in your category, there's this concept of an impulse buy. And it seems like that's why being 
as you say on the earnings call, everywhere your consumers are is so important. Can you talk about some of the places that are really vital to continue growth in it from a distribution standpoint? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned kind of getting to that 10 share is really important. If you go prior to Pepsi and, and before we were with Pepsi, we had a variety of independent distribution partners, but where a lot of our sales were coming in as warm. We're with one of the a top performing beverage within energy on Amazon. Right now we're the number one energy drink on Amazon in the category that we reported on our earnings call. But when you when you look at that, a lot of our consumers are buying the product warm, they're taking it home and having it as part of a daily lifestyle and daily routine. And that goes back to our, we're really big in grocery, we were in Target, uh, we've been in Walmart about two years, and really taking advantage of that impulse purchase. Um, and that's what Pepsi has really allowed us to do. You're right, energy drinks are an impulse purchase. It's you need it's a need state, you need the you need a function, you're able to take it uh, take advantage of that because we had access to these front checkout cool getting more cooler placements. We placed over 10,000 coolers last year, and Pepsi has added us to a, a variety of their coolers. So uh, impulse purchases is something that we haven't been able to capture in a really substantial way versus now we're able to capture a lot of that impulse purchase. So that has projected the company uh, to that 10 share, and we got a lot, of, a lot of hard work and a lot of opportunity going forward. And pivoting to, to some of these marketing partnerships that you all have been talking about, can you walk us through your framework for selecting which brands, sports properties, personalities you want to align with as a company and how you think about those partnerships, how you approach them and bring them to life? Yeah, well, one thing, I mean, when you have a, a really consumer products product offering and like Celsius, we were born in the gym, so historically, if you go back, we've really focused this brand at Vitamin Shop, GNC, Gold's Gym, 24 Hour, Equinox, really focusing with this community. And due to the health and wellness trends continue to evolve, the number of gym memberships continue to grow, the number of gym opportunities grew. Um, if you look at Barry's Boot Camp, we're a big supporter of them. And really, really fitness has become an entertainment vehicle when you really think about it. People used to go to the gym back in the day for a, for a particular reason. Now you're going to the gym to really meet people. It's a place to be seen. It's a place to hang out. There's smoothie bars, there's lounges. It's really a, a part of a daily lifestyle. And we've been able to activate that through Celsius with our Live Fit mantra, providing additional thermogenic properties, helping your body accelerate metabolism and also promoting fat burning, which has been key to our, our health and fitness community. And then as we've scaled and grow over the years, we've really leveraged those trends and brought in really unique flavors. Right next to me, we talk about some of our new innovation here. We have our really space theme. So I got Cosmic Vibe, but we launched last year. And this year we're launching Galaxy Vibe and Astro Vibe, which are really refreshing, unique flavors that bring you on an experience on every sip. And that has allowed us to expand further and broader than just a fitness channel and really going after you know, the larger opportunity, which is people looking for energy, wanting a refreshing product, but then also wanting great function. And that's what keeps the keeps them loyal because of our great flavors and the experience you feel on the product. The product actually makes you feel good. It's zero sugar and got over 2.8 grams of vitamins in it. Green tea, grana and biotin. I think you guys did a really, really great job of, you know, if it's the specific Barry boot camp, if it's college, different types of universities you guys are at, and even like Jake Paul, I think you guys have a really cool partnership with Jake Paul. I think he just fought now in Puerto Rico. Did you happen to catch that fight? Yeah, I did. And, you know, when we look about the DNA of the brand and you going back to how we pick our, you know, our partners, you know, when we when we look at that, you're, you're looking at partners that resonate with the overall core brand attributes. And what we're what we really go, it's fitness lifestyle. So when you go to Jake Paul, you talk about an athlete. He's an amazing athlete. He's looking to be a, a global boxing icon uh, with some of the fights. And he's really working towards that, also working with the Olympics. So he fits into the DNA of living fit. Celsius is all about aspiring you to live your best life inside and outside the gym and accomplish your goals. And we just partnered with F1, with Ferrari, which is a great premium brand as well, because we're a premium brand in the energy category. And when you look at that brand, that offers us, a, our, really it's our first global partnership that we will be able to leverage on a global basis. And no better, I mean, if you think about the drivers in F1 and, and the work that's required, it is truly a physical activity. You really need to be on your peak performance in order to uh, drive those vehicles and put those cars on the track and all the work required. 
We partner with MLS. The World Cup's coming to the U.S. That's going to be super exciting on the timing. And no one better needs essential energy than soccer players in the U.S. There's so much activity, so much running. We partnered initially with Inner Miami. Messi has joined the team, created a lot of buzz around MLS, around the league. It's just been an exciting time. So when we go back, we always go back on partnerships and look at our core, right? Our core DNA is fitness, health and wellness, living fit, inspiring people to live their best life, to accomplish their goals inside, outside the gym. So we take that to the core and then we look at our partnerships on what better, re what best resonates with the brand and what, how we go after our communities. So with MLS, it's an 18 to 24 Gen Z. That's a really big segment within MLS and continues to grow. And we see a lot of opportunities. We're incremental to the energy category because we're bringing new consumers in for the first time. Um, so that's kind of how we kind of go about picking some of our partnerships internally. You guys have done an incredible job with that. And you, know, you keep mentioning live fit, live fit. I love that, right? Because like, as you look at competitors like Red Bull, for example, they've got 20 plus grams of sugar inside of their 8.4 ounce drinks. And I'd argue that the zero sugar aspect of your beverages were even a major catalyst for growth as more and more Americans try and steer clear of that. So why do you think Celsius was able to really capitalize on this trend successfully while maybe some of your competitors fall flat on their face? Well, it's interesting. So the, for the first time in the category, you're going to see the category flipping for the first time. When you just think about energy drinks, you think your average energy drink is really loaded with sugar like you, you mentioned. Historically, that has been very true. This year in 2024, the category is in a flip for the first time where the majority of the sales are greater than 50% will be sugar-free offerings. And you know, if you, if you look back over the last several years, that trajectory has grown each and every year and has really allowed Celsius to compete in the total energy category. So, you know, when you look at zero sugar is key, health and wellness is key. I think coming out of a post COVID world as well, when people are really paying attention to what you put in your body, you know, you need to stay active. You want your body at the peak performance. You need to watch what you eat. I think that's really helped everyone really pay attention to what we're putting in our bodies and allowed Celsius because we have green tea, we have ginger and biotin, like I mentioned, the B complexes, vitamin C, a lot of great ingredients in it, which differentiates the product versus some of the other their main competitors in the category. Celsius is now the third largest energy drink in the category. So it's really a three team race right now as we go. And what's also interesting is with our unique flavors, what we're seeing with Celsius is that the product, our consumers are consuming Celsius also outside of that traditional energy drink usage occasion. So we just partnered with Jersey Mike's last year, uh, just like expanded into Dunkin Donuts, about 3000 locations. And we see it all the time in the office. But with PepsiCo really opened up this opportunity of food service for us, which we see a great run rate of growth and opportunities going forward, is expanding that usage occasion and really going after almost total beverage. Because people see Celsius, we got great flavors. We have a refreshing watermelon, lemon, lime. I mean, some really good refreshing flavors, kiwi, guava. But you mentioned peach vibe earlier as we were prepping, getting started with the call. I mean, just really great refreshing flavors that pair really nicely with food. So essence, we are sold in the energy category. We provide great healthy energy, but we're going after total beverage right now. You talk about the I flavors and yeah, we were going, we were going around about the flavors before and super curious around product development over there. What does this look like? Because some of the flavors are very surprising. There's marshmallow, mandarin. Interest, yep. you, I just saw on your screen the raspberry lemon, which was delightful. How do you, how does the team work on these things? Where do you get your ideas and inspiration from? Uh, well, I, well, we really run a cross-functional organization. So within New Flavors, they come from all over the organization. We launched Tropical Vibe, which is a star fruit pineapple. Because we had an employee, we, we have these innovation meetings. So we bring teams from a variety of individuals from all over. Just random, we'll just say, hey, we're going to have an innovation meeting. Would you like to join? Come up with some concepts on why your flavor resonates, why we should do it next. One individual came with a star fruit. They found it on their walk, talked about star fruit trends, had some concepts of different flavors. And we're like, all right, let's try it. Then we got the creative team involved and came up with some concepts in regards to tropical vibe. And so that's how that flavor was born. We've come up with just, I know there's a lot of scientifics. We do get stats on, you know, flavor trends that are out there. But to be honest with you, most of the flavors come from our cross-functional team that meets and comes up with some really great flavors and justifies why the company, the team should launch it and get behind it. Then we flavor test, flavor test, flavor test, and then we kind of sell it internally to each other and we sign up for it and go. So 
It's not complete science. We do have a process, but <laughs> it's a lot of internal cross-functional teams meeting everyone from finance, HR, uh, shipping, logistics, marketing side, field marketing, sales. We bring everyone together. How about from some of the brand super, super fans? I've legitimately had a conversation before with friends about which flavors we would like to see. And FYI, I'm just going to give you this freebie. Spirulina would be great. But do you, I noticed I was looking on Twitter, there's so many organic mentions of people talking about the brand. Do you ever get ideas from what, what people are saying out there and they might not know you're listening? Uh, absolutely. So we always take input. We get, we have a consumer cares line. People, we get flavor requests from there. Social media, our social media team's always on the lookout. Anyone has any flavor suggestions, DM us on Instagram and we'll, we'll definitely put it into the mix. So you'll never know what's next. All right, John. So here's my next little game show question for you. I need you to rank three things in order of the potential products of their likelihood to actually come about. The first one is a low caffeine Celsius version. The second one is an alcoholic Celsius version. And the third one is a hydration focused Celsius. Ranked one through three, which one of these are most likely to come about as a potential product? Uh, we got so many ideas and concepts. Definitely on the bottom is an alcoholic Celsius. That, that's, you know, we don't see ourselves really moving in that direction, but hydration is something we talk about all the time and lowering the caffeine and also coming out maybe craft sodas. You know, that could be great with some of our great flavors. Ooh. It's something we talk about all the time. We're really big right now and are just starting to get more involved in mock Mocktails. We see a great opportunity leveraging mocktails. Sober Curious in January was a big thing. We tested at a variety of different bars and restaurants with great success. So it could be further opportunities to dial the caffeine down and come up with great uh, concepts for mocktails and also maybe craft soda and play in that category. I love how you guys are thinking about that, right? Dread January was huge amongst my friends. I'm, I'm 27, so a lot of us are you know, drink and have a good time. But we also said, wait a second, maybe we should cool it down here in January. So I'm right there with you, man. I'll be keeping my eye out for the Celsius mocktail at home kit. That's pretty cool. So moving now <laughs> to it. financials and earnings and things like that, right? Pepsi invested $550 million into your company. And you guys immediately unlocked an addition, I think it was 42,000 locations in like three months. And now this figure stands at like hundreds of thousands of locations. So I'm curious, as it relates to 2024, specifically, what are some growth levers you're looking forward to as it relates to this relationship with Pepsi to expect now over the coming months? Well, when you look at the partnership, I think there's a couple things. So keep in mind, when I just mentioned we crossed our one year anniversary in October. So we were kind of forced into their system at the tail end. Mm -hmm. So we really were working more on a regional level. We're working with their strategic planning on a holistic level on annual plans. So this year will be our first year working with them with timing and sequencing and part of their annual operating plan. So what that means is we'll get focus periods. So we're really excited about these focus periods on a national level. So we can execute against that as F1 programs with some of our great big bats for next year on a holistic level to really maximize the distribution effort and all the staff and sales team members they have to focus on Celsius as a priority for a period of time. And we're gonna get a variety of those throughout the year. So I think the better planning we have PepsiCo plans really far in advance. We were very nimble and quick prior. We're getting better each day in our planning. And this year, I think we're really focused. We have great plans. We mapped them out and wired those with Pepsi. Uh, so we're gonna get great execution this year that we didn't weren't able to do before. In addition, I think what you're doing now is if you go back prior to the partnership with Pepsi to where we are now, we talked about the 10 share. We're negotiating space right now with buyers and retailers at a 10 share brand that's contributing to growth, not only in dollars and units. So really bringing in new consumers to the category. So what that tells you is you need to carry more Celsius. And we got some great opportunities, great innovation. We just launched a brand new 16 ounce as well, a Celsius Essentials line, uh, which has been incremental at 7-Eleven. And we see great opportunities for that. It's at an 40% ACV right now. So it's really about gaining incremental shelf space in, exi in our existing accounts, better shelf place, better presence, secondary placements with displays and activation. So that's going to be the real big opportunity to unlock really the it further increase the opportunities for trial. And we know when we get trial, we get loyalty because of our great flavors and we get those repurchases. So that's really the, <clears throat> the second unlock. And number three is driving further efficiencies through our organization, through our supply chain, really looking for those opportunities. I love it. You know, you mentioned Jersey Mike's and Dunkin' Donuts and some of these really big like household names. Are there any like 
massive names that you guys might be announcing here, some some partnerships with as it relates to distribution in 2024 that I should keep an eye out for? Yeah, there's tons of opportunities out there and we're always talking, we're building on our food service team. You know, nothing we've disclosed yet. We're a public company, so you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Once we list, once we get listed, we'll be more than happy to share. But lots of opportunities, <laughs> but you never know. We're working hard. That's good, man. John, on the efficiencies point, is the way you think about this alongside the high growth, I know you used to be CFO. How, how are you kind of balancing that, that super high growth and you want to have your foot on the gas with making sure that you're kind of getting the most out of every channel and partner? Yeah, I mean, it's a balancing act. There's no way the growth that we have, you're going to drive this type of efficiency. So you're really willing to give up margin to really make sure you're maximizing the value creation on top line revenue, share, and those gains. So when we look at it, I mean, we're, our focus is always profitable growth. So we're really focused on that, but we're willing to give up some margin in order to drive greater share, greater greater sales, increase greater trial to cap for the future. So it's a balancing act, you know, and it's something we work on each and every day. It's pricing architecture strategies, promotional strategies, channel strategies, and really trying to drive efficiencies through supply chain. But with the growth you're having as well, there's areas that you're inefficient in your supply chain because you don't want to run out of stock. You just need to get the product there. You need to produce it. It might be you know, not produced in the right location, but at the end of the day, you need to fill orders to maintain that shelf space. Because once you run out of, out of shelf space, you run out of stock, that is a detriment to the, you'll lose your space. It is so difficult in the beverage industry to get shelf space. You run out of stock, you'll lose it. Our competitors will move in. It could take you six months uh, to get the shelf space back, or maybe you got to wait till the next reset to the retailer. Yeah, the, the shopper marketing component is super interesting. I think a lot of us who are in these stores don't realize kind of what goes into how you discover products at a store. Uh, you mentioned pricing, and on your earnings call, you talked about wanting to be a premium price product. Can you give us a little more color on what you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, when you see, I mean, we're priced, a lot of times we're priced in between Red Bull and Monster. You know, Monster or Red Bull does lead the pricing category, but we do see us as a premium player with premium ingredients. You know, there's opportunities down the road for price. We do have a pricing promotional strategy. Talk about, you know, we do a variety of promotions. The category is about very promotional, about 26 times, uh, 26 weeks a year on promotion on average, if not more. And when you talk about, you know, the the opportunity to get trial, you know, having a promotional sale allows that trial to create that loyalty. So those are things that it's a balancing act as as we you know continue to navigate. Keep in mind your average consumer when you're going into a retailer, you probably have maybe 30 seconds at best to try to capture that consumer that's going in for the you know going in for an offering, uh, an energy drink, or some type of a beverage. So, you know, it's important that you continue to market, have better, improve your placements to capture that initial trial. You good on that one, Katie? Want me to follow to the part to my question about Red Bull? Yeah. Cool. All right. Excuse me, John. So I know Red Bull just announced a price increase that took effect. I think it was January 1st of this year. And I think even Monster Energy mentioned a price increase just last week on their earnings call. So to me, it seems like you guys have a great excuse to follow suit, increase prices of your own to further increase prices of your own to further validate sort of this premium product. Could that maybe support a 50% margin? in 25 and beyond? I think there's a lot of opportunities on pricing. I think what you're hearing from Red Bull and Monster, they, they, you know, that I'm not, you know, what they're talking about is maybe a frontline price increase, but then you deal down and you do a variety of promotional strategies. So there's ways to get additional pricing and enhancement without officially taking frontline pricing. There's a variety of different levers. You know, there's a cost of paying for what we call slotting fees in the beverage industry that come off of revenue. That's really paying for additional space and retailers. There's tons of different drivers to really drive market Margin, as well as cost savings on the supply chain side so and driving efficiencies. So we feel, we've always said that we feel upon scale, there's opportunities to get to a margin similar to our peer group that we are competing with. Uh, and we do look at Monster as our, as our closest peer to us. Now, how do you guys think about pricing as it relates to entering new markets, right? You guys are now entering Canada, the UK, and Ireland. How are you kind of doing that research on pricing, consumer demand, maybe even the regulatory environment? 
Yeah, there, there's a lot involved, a lot of team members involved in that. And of course, regulatory, you're using agencies, you're using attorneys, regulatory experts to make sure product is compliant. Each country is different, rules, regulations, labeling, even potential ingredients, bottle bill fees, recycling charges. There's, there's just a lot of regulatory as well as taxes potentially involved. So really need you to do your proper due diligence when entering new markets. And then on your pricing, there needs to be a whole pricing architecture strategy. Like I said, we want to be priced somewhere in between Red Bull and Monster. So it's evaluating where the category is priced. What are the promotional strategies? You don't want to be an outlier, right? You want to be com somewhat com competitive in the category. So really making sure you got your proper homework. Each market's a little different based on pack size. You know, a variety of different things can affect pricing and your, and your strategies there. So those are things we continue to an analyze. Canada being an example of a market relatively similar to the U.S. I know you guys are just getting going there. Any anecdotal insights or data from how that's going so far? I did see somebody on social media snap a photo of Celsius at a Walmart. So know that that's there. Talk us through that. Yeah, you know, we launched, we wound up shipping our first uh, orders into Canada to our, our Pepsi distribution partner who's servicing all the channels. We launched in 7-Eleven as well as Coos Charge, which is Circle K. And it's been, it's been, it's been great. Initial rollout, still early. We're only in, you know, like call it eight to 12 weeks. So just getting some data back, but sales have been performing a, a much better than, than initially anticipated on a rollout. We're watching it closely. You mentioned Walmart. So we're starting to gain additional broader distribution outside of those two key retailers we partnered with. But I think it's, it's too, too early to, to really know, but I think it's, it's, it's meeting all of our internal expectations and more. And we've been looking ahead, but I think now we want to look back for a little bit because I don't think many people know on, who've come on this new wave of investing in your company, consuming your company. You've actually been publicly traded since 2006, and there was a moment in which the company was delisted in 2012. You come in 2017. Uh, can you give us that story of, of kind of what you what you came into and when you first looked around, what were the, the key things you wanted to improve upon taking over as CEO? Yeah, well, actually, I joined in 2012 as the CFO when, when they were delisted. So I joined at a time when it was on the OTC markets with the stop sign that says stay away, non-reporting. And I think six months in, it was about, it was six months in, it was greater than 50% of our revenue was coming from Costco. We got delisted from Costco and a variety of other retailers during that time. So uh, 2012 was a kind of a really dark time, a reset. I worked with Jerry David, the prior CEO. I worked closely with him at a, a prior company, Orgenix. So I joined him to help turn the business around. So it's really looking at fundamentals. You know, where's the product? Who's the consumer of this product? Who's consuming it now? You know, why are they consuming it and how we can build upon that? And we really launched this product really focusing on in the HBC, so the health and beauty sets of grocery stores, focusing on folks that were looking for health and wellness and really focusing on, you know, ultimately their weight loss initially. And the product that lasted for several years. And then we realized we had a great, amazing energy drink on our hands, especially looking at comments and we repositioned the product several times. I did take over, like you mentioned, in 2017 when Jerry retired. We further uh, leveraged this opportunity and really drove this Celsius Live Fit Essential Energy Mantra as a fitness lifestyle brand and really rode the trends of health and wellness and fitness and the growth of fitness to really differentiate the brand in the category as is better for you energy drink. And we've been able to just capture more and more consumers and as a broader positioning than we had prior on the initial start. And it's constantly evaluating why, you know, who is the consumer? Why are they consuming it? How do we become part of a daily lifestyle and daily routine? I mean, that's the most important thing. So, you know, you don't want to just be a one off, especially as a consumer product. We need to be part of a daily lifestyle and a daily routine. And most importantly, we want to build the company, even though it's a beverage, it can't be about what the liquid is. It needs to be bigger than that. What we need to do is build a global iconic brand. And when you see Celsius and you see our logo and Celsius Live Fit, it's more, it says something more about you than the liquid in the can. 
Um, when you show up to a meeting, you have a Celsius, it says something about you. It says you're, you know, versus when you show up to a meeting with a, with a Red Bull, that could say something about you. If you show up to a meeting with a, with a monster, it could sh say something about you. It's the same reason why people wake up over an hour early to stand in the Starbucks line, right? And, and we'll, we'll wait in that line for an hour and a half and get their Starbucks and they go in because it says something about who you are. It's like the threads on your back. It's the shoes you wear. It's your clothes. That's how you build a global iconic brand. So we've been working on that as well along the way. And that's what we've always aspired to. And it's, it's coming together. I mean, you talk to a lot of our fans and it's, it, Celsius is a, is a cultural brand now. It's, it's more than the liquid in the can, which is just really exciting to see, especially with the 18 to 24 crowd. One thing you touched on there that I thought was interesting is it seems like there's seasons to being a CEO and eras, if you will. And you kind of you came in at this turnaround stage and now you're in a growth stage. Can you shed some light on what what you need to level up during certain stages or what changed in your role going from one to the other? I mean, a lot a lot has changed along the way. We constantly restructure team, restructured our team several times. You know, in my role, it's taking more more of a coaching coaching role. I think that has been something that's really changed my role from, especially you know, in the early in the earlier days when you had a smaller team, it was a lot you know really working closely with the teams and helping them really understand the strategy and, and identifying the opportunities to create results, to create trial, to create awareness, to create loyalty. A lot of it, a lot of my job and function now is a lot of working with the team still and validating, but also most importantly, coaching. You know, why is the, what is the company doing? Why are we doing this? Why is the brand who it is? Why is it connected with consumers? Working with teams on data. We have so much data now that uh, I have a whole data analytics team. Having that data come in and working with the teams closely on how do we better leverage data? The data we had you know, in 2017 is totally different than the data we have today, which is quite amazing. But the same thought process needs to hold true, right? What is the data? How is it connecting with consumers? How do we continue to make project move Celsius forward? And most importantly, how do we better partner with our consumers and our customers? You know, speaking of customers and walking into a meeting holding Celsius and kind of being perceived as something versus walking into a meeting holding a monster or a Red Bull, right? When I think of someone walks in holding a monster, I'm like, your name's probably Kyle and you skateboard, <laughs> right? And so like when I think of Celsius, I get the exact sort of opposite, right? Living fit. Something I think you guys did a great job on kind of finding those customers are women. I mean, let's be real, like monster in Red Bull. And when I think of that, I think of like, you know, Red Bull does a lot of extreme sports advertising, monsters like dirt bikes and like skateboarding where when I think of Celsius I mean for example I was getting my hair cut by my hairdresser named Taryn and I was telling her I was going to do this interview she's like oh my gosh I love my Celsius and she like opened up her mini fridge and there's like 17 of them in there like you guys have really resonated with women is there any sort of like you know strategy around that like how how did that happen I mean I think that's just a wonderful thing that an energy drink company that's really never before seen doing something like that. Yeah, I mean, we're actually a little bit more male right now than historically we've been about 50-50. Due to our distribution expansion and convenience, we're a little bit higher than 50% male, but do have a heavy female following, as you mentioned. And, you know, it's it's about staying true. I mean, health and wellness is universal. It, it doesn't matter who you are, right? And everyone wants to live life to the fullest and within the DNA of the brand, want great flavor, want to feel better. So it's really universal. It's actually global trend. If you think about what Celsius is doing, we're capitalizing on three of the fastest growing trends in food and beverage. And everyone wants better for you, but they don't want to sacrifice flavor, right? So we have over seven essential vitamins. We taste great. We zero sugar. We hit those attributes. Number two, we all want more function in the foods and beverages we consume. Celsius does more than just, just, an ener just provide you energy. Also provides these other thermogenic properties, helps you achieve your health and wellness goals. And then number three, fitness is hip, cool, sexy, and premium. Uh, when you look at it, if you go back, I mean, workout wear used to be only wear in the gyms. Now you'll wear it to the mall. You wear it. I mean, you see it all over the place. So, you know, this is part of culture and we've been able to capitalize on those trends as we've gone through this journey with the looking at the opportunities. Well, speaking of culture, I think that something that COVID sort of catalyzed in our culture is retail investors, right? There's a ton of people on you know, these retail investing apps now who own stock in Celsius. So I'm curious, right? You think about Celsius investors are probably some of your biggest customers and they're your biggest fans, right? Own stock and things that you love and know. 
Yeah. What are you doing now to deepen that relationship, if anything? Is there something that you all have even thought about as it relates to rewarding them or communicating with them? Well, I think, you know, there's definitely opportunities. I think uh, always investing in what you know and is really important. We, we try to do outreaches and go to investor conferences. We we do quarterly quarterly earnings calls. We're doing outreach, uh, you know, and it's a variety of ways to communicate with your investors, but there's no better than an investor who's also a consumer and a big advocate of the brand that helps us communicate all the great things about Celsius. Hey, well, listen, John, I got 50 shares. So I'm, I'm on the ride with you, my friend, and I'm drinking these Celsius. So let's let's run, baby. <laughs> let's go. Cheers to that. John, speaking of people who love your brand, I saw that Jonah Hill once said that Celsius was one of the top things he could not live without. Which celebrity or public figure would you most be excited to hear that from? Not Jonah Hill. Oh yeah, Jonah Hill is awesome. I mean, I mean, what's interesting? We just had that. We we're at Arnold. I don't know if you know about the Arnold Classic, but it's one of the biggest fitness shows in the U.S. Uh, major presence there. It was awesome to see Arnold in our booth drinking a Galaxy Vibe. I mean, he smiled. It was like he, he you know, it. He loved it. So how did he uh, pronounce I had to say Galaxy Arnold, Vibe? Seeing him drink it was awesome. How did he pronounce Galaxy Vibe? Can you do it? Exactly. I'm trying to bait you into an Austrian yeah. accent. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So Arnold's your guy. That's your pick? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Right. Terminator. Yeah, it's a good one. Why not? I feel like when I have Celsius, I run like that Android guy on the Terminator. So I feel like that's a good. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> What an awesome interview, John. We really appreciate you joining us on this episode of After Earnings, and we look forward to having you back here very soon. Excellent. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers, Thanks, man. John. All right, Katie, I am now myself a whole Celsius deep, feeling good, ready to walk through the debrief. What was your favorite part about that interview with John? Most importantly, I think John answered the question that's on everyone's mind, which is what is the plural of Celsius? So tune in for that. <laughs> I also really enjoyed him talking about the importance of distribution, their Pepsi partnership, how important that is to a product that is really an impulse buy in a lot of cases, and then how he talked about building a community from there. How about you, Austin? What did, what did you take away from that interview? Yeah, I really like the community aspect. I think it was, you know, Katie, when I was thinking about what he said, when you walk into a meeting holding a Celsius versus a Red Bull versus a Monster Energy drink, like what people think about you, like I never thought about that, but he's completely true. We all sort of have these inherent biases. It's like, oh, you're drinking a Monster, you're drinking a Red Bull. I always have positive vibes whenever I see someone drinking a Celsius. It just to the point, it means you're living fit, you're clean, you're very you know active in your life. I think they've done an incredible job of building that brand nationwide, and I'm eager to see how they'll be able to sort of transform that and migrate that into what is it now, Canada, Ireland, and the UK. And I just really want to give him his flowers. I mean, I'm pretty positive that Red Bull and Monster have a 75% mark good share on just energy drinks in general. And they've gone from non-existent to now, I think he said 11%, right? Bank of America is projecting 14% by the end of this year. So they're doing a lot of things right. And I'm eager to see what other partnerships they've got around the corner. He mentioned Formula One and Ferrari. He talked about soccer, talked a little bit about boxing with Jake Paul. I mean, it's all over college campuses. So what a great interview with John here. And I definitely learned a lot. And now I'm an even more excited shareholder, which by the way, I do own 50 shares of Celsius. This is not financial advice, just a guy on the internet who is investing into things that he knows and loves and trying to have some fun along the way with my friend Katie here. I'm Katie Perry. And I'm Austin Hankwitz. And this was the After Earnings Podcast brought to you by Stakeholder Labs and Morning Brew. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this episode with a friend if you learned something new. And we will catch you on our next episode.